Ken O'Farrell gave a great presentation from about the blockchain and his experience with it. And he works for Microsoft, but you're not working for Microsoft in the product department, you know, Azure kind of thing. What do, what do you do there? No, so I, I work in Microsoft devices supply chain, and really my job is to understand innovation and capability opportunities within our logistics supply chain. Yeah. So that was the exciting thing about it. He was not an uh, evangelist saying, this is the most wonderful thing, this whole blockchain thing. You're trying to r solve real problems. Yes. And uh, what kind of, uh, you did a test uh, with a bunch of partners. Uh, describe the real problem you came up with. Yeah, so so one of the problems we face is, um, you know, we deal with customers. They We have a view that we're doing fantastic. The customer has a different view. And it's just because we've all these intermediaries in between us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like something that looks fantastic on our side may not look as fantastic on their side. And we're trying to eliminate those back and forth movements and back and forth transactions that prevent this trust happening and it'll get us to one source of truth across the supply chain. Yeah, And that is bu beautiful for a blockchain. Describe what, what are these impressions? What was, the, uh, what was the, the, the problem you were trying to solve uh, realistically? What kind of partners were involved and what kind of supply chain was it? Yeah, so we had, um, so we had our distribution partner, Arvado, in, in the States. We had carriers involved in the States. We had an RFID supplier involved in the States. And we had one of the mass merchants involved in, 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 in the US as well. And all we're trying to figure out is that you know, when we say we've delivered on a certain point at a certain time on a certain day, yeah. that the retailer says the exact same thing to us. And at times that's not the case. And it leads then to this back and forth validation between us to get to, okay, we all agree this was the date or we all agree we didn't get the date. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to uh, take away these myriad of um, just verifications within the system. Um, by and by why does blockchain help with that? Yeah, so what blockchain does, right, it shifts the trust to the technology. And that's the key thing. So you're able to envisage a different way of working. You're able to envisage maybe just having the inventory given to the, uh, you know, to given to your mass merchant, and for them to consume and feed it back through the blockchain because it's immutable, because it can't be touched, um, and because there's uh, like it's almost like a third-party audit trail on it. Mm -hmm. So everybody's validating the same inf same data. Same. Okay. So what happens is you uh, you say, hey, uh, I'm uh, I'm I'm this is about sending information. They're sending packages away, yeah, right? This yeah. is about you supplying them. Correct. So and the moment you do that, you put in some kind of a blockchain. You put that information uh, for tracking and tracing. You put it on a certain blockchain. Yeah, th that's exactly it. And what we're trying to do, so we're trying to, so w the gap we have at the moment is we're looking for the convergence of physical and digital together, mm -hmm. and. Right now, it's a little bit expensive to do it on every single unit, but I believe that you know, with the Internet of Things and with this drive to connected devices, that we're going to see a dramatic drop in costs. You're going to see GPS systems become throwaway GPS systems, and when you get down to that level of cost, then you bring it together, and then blockchain be really becomes a, a, a but strong. Why? Uh, we, we, we can also do it with a nice database, which everybody can basically write to and has uh, separate rights to separate records. Why do you need a blockchain? Uh, I think the, the key thing is um, you've got a crypto it's cryptographically protected, right? So that's a, a unique concept. Every so really, the fact that nobody can change it—that is the back. That is the most important thing that creates trust. Yeah. It trust and it and a digital log that's auditable. That's the key thing. That's basically the blockchain, a digital lock which cannot be uh, which cannot be changed, and everybody can look into. Exactly, exactly. Now you did that project. Mm. What were the experience of the retailer, of you, of all the people in between? What did they learn? Yeah, it, it was, there was lots of learnings from it. I think um, uh, I think uh, trust and adoption are a big thing, right? So so we're trying to get more people to adopt to it, but people are saying, well, you know, you're a competitor, I'm a competitor. You know, we don't really want. You know, I don't want to give you the lead. So you have a uh, you have you have concerns around trust. You have concerns yeah. around adoption. Like I mentioned in there, that you know, eight percent of CIOs are short-term spending on it. You know, so there's a, there's a you, this was a test with a bunch of people yeah. who liked each other and who wanted to test it out. So uh, trust is one thing. Yeah. Acceptance is and and making sure that that Microsoft is not a big uh, the blockchain provider for everything. I can imagine. Yeah. Other things which uh, were practical, which were, were difficult, yeah. or at this phase. Yeah, I think uh, I think the RFID capability we brought in. Uh, I think you know there's there's still gaps in RFID that need to be closed down. I think we did it at a pallet level to keep it simple. We would love to take that down to a unit level, but you've got to factor in the cost of digitizing the, the supply chain. So you again, you're back to where's that where's that 
connected devices technology going and how fast it'll drive that process. Talk about the RFID cost or the cost to integrate it in the blockchain? Uh, uh, not so much the cost of integrating it in the, in the supply chain because everybody does that as part of their business. I think there, are, there will be some challenges around supportability. Can every partner you know, fully support it? Mm -hmm. But I think those challenges can be overcome. I think the cost element really is about getting to a connected device. Okay. What about, uh, you said also in your, um, in your meeting, in, in your presentation, GDPR? What a problem. Uh, yeah, GDPR. So it, uh, I find th this whole concept uh, mildly amusing, right? So you've got GDPR, which has in its documentation, uh, erase, erase, erase. Don't yeah, let consumers... The right to be forgotten. Yeah. And that's really difficult yeah, exactly. with blockchain. Yeah, and, and blockchain then is about immutable data. Yes. So, you're, so you're saying, well, I, we can't delete it. And then the, and GDPR said, we have to delete it. Yeah. So you get this kind of... Um, uh, you can use blockchain everywhere except in Europe. Well, I think there w I think what we will eventually do is you'll keep your consumer data off chain, and ultimately you'll put a reference on chain, which is not which you normally do with blockchain anyway. You never have a bunch exactly. of data on the blockchain. It's just more reference uh, references and access to data. Yeah, yeah, but it's, I suppose I think it's, it's a classic example of where legislation and technology diverge again. You know, and it's only a recent uh, recent legislation. That's you know, true. we have to learn the GDPR guys version two now. Other thing, you have a lot of people who ask you, "Hey, let's use blockchain," yes. and uh, engineers which want to use it. What are the what are your key points when you can use a blockchain? When is it useful? Yeah, exactly. So the key thing is, you have to have a business insight. Yeah. You know, it's not the other way around. But people are excited about it. It's a little bit overhyped, so they all come running in. So I think, you know, you've got to see: is there like trust boundary issues? You know, are you moving data across parties? You know, are you ver are you are you doing verification? of that data and of that movement and you know is there an opportunity to eliminate intermediaries mm -hmm. those four questions if you can answer those and they're all answered yes then there's potential for blockchain if you say no to those questions then really you know it's not the technology for you yeah and there's a lot of examples like that so going through this uh, effort uh, which blockchain did you use actually in this uh, one is it uh, uh, we use ethereum um, but just again ethereum uh, uh, yeah uh, oh not ibm's hyperledger or not li hyperledger uh, and again it's just it's just uh, to us all these ledgers yeah. are different doors to the same house that's effectively it okay what do you think about the future of blockchain you know, you're now in phase zero yeah oh. How do you think it will develop? Yeah, I think I think it will take off. I think I think there's huge potential. I th I think the problem we're having is, or the problem we're going to face is that we're going to have so much connected devices that require so many messages between us that I don't think the current you know EDI API capabilities are scalable enough. And something like blockchain technology has the, the potential. Blockchain, I mean, is already struggling with you know. 10, uh, 10 transactions per second with, with Bitcoin and Ethereum can do 50. Uh, it, it is, it, that is a big, uh, th they are not fast. They don't do a lot of transactions. Yeah, yeah, that's and that's true, right? But then we're using, uh, so Microsoft are using a service like Azure Workbench, which gives you the platform to get on it. And the speeds are associated with that are equivalent to anything you get on online today because you're not putting everything onto that blockchain. You're only putting the essential data points so your whole database stays off chain and that's if you put that on on chain absolutely you're going to grind it to a halt but if you put the key milestones across then that issue goes away yeah and there's also blockchains now which do a hundred thousand transactions a second so i mean that that problem is also going Correct. to be solved yeah. in that so you you tried it yeah. and instead of using your own sql database uh, of microsoft sql you, you're going to use the blockchain Potentially so, maybe, you know. Or just integrated with each other, because you need both. Yeah, I think it'll be integrated with, I think our, you know, Microsoft sees blockchain as, as, as the ledger, but we'd offer it a service to enterprise customers to get onto that ledger in an easy and simple fashion. As a customer now of the Microsoft Workbench, uh, the Azure uh, Workbench, mm. uh, the how satisfied were you with the quality of their service? Yeah, I, I, d I think we learned a bit through it. We learned we learned some new things in there. But in fairness, um, what a lot of the partners fed back to us was like just it, the ease of use, the ease of getting onto it, and really, you know, it allowed them focus on just getting the smart contract right. You know, so it simplified the heavy lifting, and that's really what you want, you know, from a service provider. Good luck learning. Thanks for sharing. All right, thank you. All right, thank you.